Flutter, a modern UI toolkit with which you can build cross-platform beautiful UIs. But do you know that it can also be used to develop games? Introducing Flame Engine, a 2D game framework built on top of Flutter with which you can create endless runner games with cute dinosaurs, flying birds, ice hockey games, pool games, metroidvania-like games, space shooter games, and even a furry head that must avoid incoming obstacles. To start, add the Flame dependency to your Flutter project. Create a class that extends from Flame game. Wrap this class within a game widget called in RunApp. Add a size for our object. Create a paint that will define its color. Add an X and Y values to determine its position. Add the render function in charge of painting the object. Create a rect that will define the boundaries of the object and call draw rect in the provided canvas to paint a beautiful cube. Add the keyboard events mixing to listen for keyboard events. Then overwrite on key event and detect the arrow keys to modify the X and Y values that will make our cube move. The movement is quite raw. Let's refine it. Create another class that extends from flame game. Add the size. Add the paint. Create a speed variable that will define the speed of the object. Add a friction value so the object doesn't stop immediately. Add a position. Create a movement vector that will hold the current momentum of the object. Here we have again our cube. Add a bunch of variables to know which keys are pressed. Add the keyboard events and on key event to save the currently pressed keys. Override the update function, which will be called in each frame with the time from the last frame in the form of the delta value. Create an input vector. Modify the input vector based on the current keys. If the input is not zero, apply to the movement vector the normalized value multiplied by the speed given to the object and multiply again for the delta time. This way we can ensure a frame rate independent movement. If the user is not pressing a key, apply friction to the current movement vector to make the object stop. Then add the movement vector to the current position. Now the cube moves more smoothly and elegantly. But drawing a cube is quite boring. Let's refactor the code so that the player logic is in a separate class and we will also add a sprite to it. Create a player class that will extend sprite component. Add the size. Add again the speed, the friction and the movement vector. We are not adding the position since sprite component extends from position component, which has already a position. Load the sprite you want to use into the sprite variable of a sprite component. Now add the logic to detect the keys. This time we do this in a component level instead of game level. Add the same logic as before to move the object. Now create a class that extends from flame game with the has keyboard handler components, which is needed if we have added keyboard detection at component level. Create the player. Let's modify that black background color. Override the onload method and then instance the player and add it to the scene. And now we have a player with the omnipresent Flutter logo that moves around. With Flame, you can also detect collisions, apply effects, manage other forms of inputs, add audio, and more. For more information, head to flame-engine.org. And for more content about Flutter and mobile development in general, subscribe to this channel. Goodbye.